So welcome back, 0K fans, to an exhibition match. This is Shadow 33 casting a game between Sakdoth and El Torero on Onyx Cauldron. And we can get this started. So Sakdoth in the northwest corner of the map, El Torero in the southeast corner of the map. El Torero going very quickly for shield bots, while Sakdoth not getting a factory immediately. This is a little unusual. Getting a light vehicle factory, however, and. We've seen Shield versus Light Vehicle before, and it seemed to be a pretty even match, though Light Vehicle did ultimately win, but it's fairly even. So, any reports on Shield Buzz being overpowered against Light Vehicles have been exaggerated or are outdated. I know it was a common thing to believe, seems to be no longer the case. Altero is getting his economy nicely set up, as is Sactoth. Though Sactoth focusing very heavily on wind generators, which is not surprising. El Torero, however, is going for Commander Junior as he did the last couple games. Sactoth has not yet morphed his commander, though that's not at all surprising. He doesn't have the energy to do it quite yet. Focusing his entire economy on production. Getting very quick Ravagers, actually. Not going for an early raiding phase. On a map this size, I'm not terribly surprised. However, raiding did seem to work out last time I showed this map, and it's not... The rush distance isn't terribly large. It, I realize it's an 18 by 18 map, but given that a lot of it is taken up by border space, the rush distance is probably equivalent to a 14 by 14 map. Admittedly, diagonals, but it's still short enough that I could see raiding actually having some effect, being able to work. So, Sakdoth is... He does have his base nicely set up. He does have a couple darts coming up as well, or a dart coming up as well. The Ravager trying to do what it can, but... Bandit getting close enough that it actually counts. And El Torero getting a dirtbag in as well to try to block off Sakdoth's vehicle factory. This is something that we actually haven't seen surprisingly a lot in these casts, is the use of dirtbags. They were nerfed sort of recently in that their mound... The dirtbags, when they die, they just leave a mound. They terraform up the ground from below them. Used to be the case that they'd only be able to block off vehicles. They were switched fairly recently to block off vehicles and bots. Everything but spiders is blocked by them. And apparently that stopped people from using them. I haven't seen them very much recently. Very surprising. They used to be the go-to scout unit for shield bots. I don't believe the cost has changed. It might be still... It is... Oh, it's 35 metal. It was slightly increased. Compared to bandits at 80 metal, that's... I guess I could see that. They have no offensive power, and they're only... Their main strength is blocking off your opponent's base, which can be terraformed around. So I suppose... I suppose they're no longer the go-to unit they used to be, at least early game. This is the first I've seen them in weeks. At least on the games I've casted. So El Torero is continuing to get up his raiding game going, and... Both players are about even for economy. El Torero is a little bit... No, actually they're even. It was just the reclaim that was getting sacked off the head of the dirtbag. Both players are basically on par. Another dirtbag is here scouting a bit for El Torero, but... Raptors are coming for sacked off. The bandits are able to deal some damage, but they are micromanaging themselves well enough, and they mean themselves. They're okay now. El Toro is taking command of them. If you see the yellow outline, it means the players have selected the units, but otherwise, it means the units are just operating on their own. And as I mentioned before, zero K units have pretty good unit AI, so you don't need to necessarily micromanage every single one of their moves for them to not die. They aren't completely stupid, which is handy given the amount of units that you can build in this game. And more bandits and only bandits coming from El Torero. I'm not entirely surprised given that Sakdoth's going entirely for Ravagers. I'm a little bit surprised not to see Outlaws though. Just because it would slow down the Ravagers. It would... I mean, their fire rate's already pretty slow, but it would already... It would reduce whatever advantages they may have already. If you got an Outlaw or two. However, you might be worried of the Outlaw getting killed, which is a legitimate concern. If the Outlaw got killed, that would kind of defeat the purpose, and the Ravager could hit the Outlaw without too much issue. El Torero is setting up his shield bots, or his bandits, into a nice line to surround the Ravager, but the Ravager not falling for it. Sakdoth is running away with that. It might still be encircled from here, but it looks like it's going to be able to escape. Sakdoth does not have any... Well, he has another Ravager and a couple darts coming for support, but he is primarily focusing on... No, actually, he's not just focusing on constructors. He's getting one constructor, but he is getting some levelers as well. And the dirtbag is coming around. El Torero looks like he might be trying to figure out what's going on once again in Sakdoth's base. I don't think he's actually seen inside Sakdoth's base at all. Sakdoth knows what's going on with El Torero, but El Torero does not have the converse knowledge. 
Oh, and actually, Tom Zunder in the chat is pointing out that... Well, Cybernetic Pony, I believe, actually. Is pointing out that there is no reason to use Outlaws without Thugs. And that's that's a good point. Outlaw with Thug, however... I'm a bit surprised we're not seeing that, since Outlaw with Thug... Oh, wait. Well, Sackdoss Commander did just get killed. So, those bandits are paying off to some extent. Convict coming up, no Thugs, though. Yeah, Outlaw Thug is fairly common, which is another thing to be surprised about. That hasn't come up yet. But these bandits aren't too bad of an idea. It's not necessarily the... Well, actually, it seems to be the best idea. I'm going to say it's not necessarily the optimal strategy, but if... At this point, it does seem to be. Bandits are quite powerful. And given their speed, they are able to dodge the Raptor shots pretty well. The Dirtbag not being able to do too much, not able to get in front of the factory. That's what you really want them to do, is to get in front of the factory and die there. But apparently that Dirtbag did not get a chance to jump in front of the factory before it died. So no terraforming is uh, is really required here. There were some masons nearby to terraform if, if needed. But with Sackdoss Commander dead, there is no free builder right now. And it is being reclaimed. Sackdoss is actually getting even on Metal as a result, but he is behind in energy economy. El Torero continuing to build up his bandits. He is now, now getting more convicts and bandits. Not going for anything other than convicts and bandits. And frankly, I can't blame him. The bandits are working out very well. The Ravagers are... Starting to build up, though, and this leveler is what I'd be worried about. The Ravagers have a slow wish moving projectile, the bandits can dodge that, but the levelers, the projectile moves quickly enough and has enough splash damage that those bandits will not last very long. At this point, I'd say Thugs wouldn't be a bad idea. Thug Felon actually might work pretty well, though it'd pretty much be one shot and then it'd be done. Sackcloth, however, is... Actually losing map control. El Toro and Sackdoth are both evenly getting map control, but El Toro is getting it a bit faster. He is about even for economy, though. Both players are pretty much on par for economy. A lot of that has to do with this reclaim. This this Mason here is putting Sackdoth even for economy. Actually, slightly ahead right now, but basically even for economy. While El Toro's economy is entirely based off of metal extractors, of which he has quite a few. Actually, I'll just switch so you see red as him. And he does have... Two, three, 10, so that's about well, 20 some odd metal worth of extractors, while Sackdoth has only about 8. Actually, 7. And, no, it's not right, it is 8. He does have 8, but those 8 are only giving him 16 metal. He has no commander for extra metal, and a battle being joined. A nice, a awesome flank coming in from El Torero. Bandits on both sides. The level are going down first. These Ravagers are doing what they can, but they will be going down shortly. A Roach! A Roach would be able to work out extremely well in this situation. The Bandits are not winning this fight for free. They are winning this fight, but they are losing a lot of the number. The Leveler! A second Leveler did come in and did take care of half a dozen Bandits in one shot. But yeah, a Roche would be an awesome idea right now. And it looks like that's exactly what El Torero had in mind. A little bit late, however. A second battle may be joined, but Sakdos' build rate is not high enough to actually make that a viable option. El Torero is massively outbuilding Sakdos for army. Sakdos right now has only... Well... Only 940 metal worth of offensive units. He basically only has this leveler and maybe a couple ravagers on the map. There's... No, not even then. He has the builders, he has his leveler, and he has some more ravagers coming up. He does have... He is going to be making use of this metal, though. He has actually been floating metal for this entire game. El Torero has 33 metal. I expect another factory will be built up fairly soon. It looks like he's just focusing all of that metal into building more shield bots. I don't see any other factories on the map, and I shouldn't be surprised, given how successful shield bots have been so far. Roaches are set up on both choke points. Very nice to see. As soon as Sackdoth builds up his army and goes into attack, the Roaches will be waiting for him. All three choke points, I should say, actually. It's also down here. So it doesn't matter how Sackdoth tries to get to El Torero, he will have to go through Roaches first. So he will have to get something to scout that out to stop that. A couple darts might work. If they're positioned the right way, they will work. Oh, and the act pointing out the yes, the nanospray does work now. This is on the... But, well, he should know. He's the one who made the map. But yeah, the nanospray does work. As we saw, the last time I cast this was an older version of the map where the nanospray was messed up by the rain. The rain got modified slightly by some little wizardry, and the nanospray is worked now. But what's also working is El Torero's shield bot strategy, and that is working remarkably well. Sacked off, losing a bunch of map control on multiple fronts right now. He does have a Stardust anti-swarm turret on the middle choke point, so... No direct assaults for El Torero, at least not with the shield bots. Levelers and Ravagers coming in. The Levelers are going to be the only thing actually dealing enough damage to matter. And these solo collectors are just tanking the damage. Actually, that's a really bad thing that they were tanking the damage for El Torero. Sackdoth able to get back in the game as a result of that, or at least able to get rid of some of the army advantage that El Torero had. Start 
leveling out the playing field. And speaking of level, leveling out the playing field with the leveler, how appropriately. That's what they do. But even with that, the bandits were still able to deal a fair amount of damage. And Sackdoth, apparently not teaching his Ravagers that friendly fire is not friendly. That Mason took quite a bit of damage from that one Ravager shell, but the Ravager did redeem himself, taking out the last bandit. <laughs> oh, and... Wait. Okay, sorry, everyone in the Twitch TV chat has different names from what they actually have as names in 0K, so I'm trying to get... Oh, I see. Sackdoth is the one pointing out in the chat. He's wondering why I always cast games where he loses. We haven't lost this game yet, Sackdoth. Don't spoil it if you have. I certainly try not to. I actually don't know offhand who's won this game. I know that Zero K website does have the replay stats available. It has it. You can see who won and who lost each game. I try to ignore that. I tend to forget in the middle of casts anyway. I try to forget in the middle of casts at the very least, and it so far has worked quite well. And Sackdoth coming in from some harassment to the south with levelers. Sorry, with ravagers. And also coming to the north, he is trying to push back. He is dealing some damage on the metal extractors, but Elturo's economy is still twice as strong as Sakdos, and Sakdos is actually the only one reclaiming at this point. No, he's not even reclaiming, but if he does, that would help out. El Torero is not reclaiming. This is all from Metal Extractors. He apparently has 20 Metal Extractors or enough power that it doesn't matter. And apparently it's the latter. Or at least it would be if the power actually didn't matter, but no, it looks like El Torero is... How is he getting all this metal? That's 40 metal around. He must have been reclaiming something. He has 30 metal now, which makes a bit more sense, but at the same time, Sakdoth has been harassing, has been beating him back, taking back map control, punishing him for not really defending this stuff here. Bandits coming in from the south to try to take care of Sakdoth's constructions here. However, the choke point along the southwest side up to Sakdoth's base has been quite nicely blocked off. Now, of course, a ramp built up here would work. I don't think these can... No, these cannot path up this wall. But if El Torero were to come around here with a builder and terraform a ramp up here and terraform it down here, he'd be able to tear apart Sackdoth's base. And Leecho coming in, it apparently did not quite kill off El Torero's commander. Actually, no wonder it didn't. It was El Torero's Leecho. El Torero did go over second factory and air factory. He is getting Leechos. They are extremely powerful single target bombers. They don't appear to have dealt a whole lot of damage yet. They might have killed a couple of Ravagers or Levelers, but the Bandits are doing that job fairly well, at least for cost. Actually, this Bandit's doing an extremely good job for cost. It's not even dying! One health getting away, and a half dozen Bandits coming in to take his place and take care of that Ravager. Very nice tactics from El Torero, and see what the rest of the map is up to. No approach on these Roaches right now. A Stardust Turret has been, or is being built along here. And Leecho coming in towards the southwest. That will be dealing quite a bit of damage once it gets in. If press the retard, it looks like it's going for the Stardust. And is it going to hit that? Yes, it is going to hit that. It's going to get rid of that. The Bandits have a free ride, well, relatively free, into Sackdoth's base right now through the front door. Opening with a Roach. That will probably actually finish off a couple. The Roaches are trying to get rid of the Stardust. Not quite dealing enough damage to get rid of it, and it will be repaired. Sackdoth, however, does have to worry about the bandits coming from the north, and likely from the south as well. Yes, they are coming in from the southwest. With no Stardust turret to worry about, he can just go for it. But El Torero, I think El Torero is... He is able to see, he does have radar on these vehicles, so he was able to see them coming in. His bandits are in place, but it looks like they're not actually doing especially well. The Ravager is very wisely staying outside of the range of this laser turret, even if it's not being built up yet. Actually, that's Sackdoss laser turret. As Sackdoss starts pouring money into El Torero's economy, this laser turret is not being built up at all. It's just being reclaimed as it comes up. It looks like El Torero has not changed his plan here, and Sackdoss has updated for it, so the laser turret will... Actually, it's... Not even going to go up, the Builder will be finished before that happens, and the Laser Turret will be reclaimed. So Sackdoth, however, does have some Avengers coming in from the north. Those will be dealing with more damage, and... Also, along the south, the Ravagers are still dealing with everything that's down here, so Sackdoth starting to be making a comeback at this point. Where's El Torero's Commander? Not that it matters at this point, actually, it doesn't. It still has twice the economy of Sackdoth, even without that. It is over here, actually, it's over to the north, while the Avengers take out more and more metal extractors, but Avengers don't have 
especially good anti-ground damage. They do have some good anti-ground damage. It's enough that they can harass on their own. But what really matters is these bandits coming in through the center and the Leecho actually not being used all that much, surprisingly enough. The Leechos had not been run had not been gone for many runs. There are well, there are a few of them that were in play, and one of them is on the air pad. There are only two. Surprisingly, they hadn't been set for runs much. And a couple of vendors are being pushed out. Was that with a Newton? I think that was with a Newton again. Unit under attack. We did have a game earlier today with a Newton with Arianus, and I think. No, I don't see any Newtons on the map, so I don't think that was actually what the problem, or what the cause of the Avengers flying out at twice their normal speed. But the Avengers hardly matter. The ground war is really what's going to happen for this one. The Leechos can still make a difference, but I don't see them really matter. The Avengers are coming in to try to distract these forces. They might be able to deal some damage, but they likely won't. Pulling back a bit, trying to get rid of this convict, but that's pretty. That's not his main target. The bandits are the main target. The bandits. Can definitely hit the Leecho coming in towards the north, trying to get rid of the Stardust, not actually doing too much. A Razor's Kiss, however, not being complete because the Mason building it, the Mason's building it, did not finish it before the Leecho came in. And another Leecho coming in, getting rid of really not strategic targets. I'm a bit surprised he isn't going around the side of the map and firing that Leecho bomb right into the vehicle factory or into the air plant. Actually, more the, the air plant first, then the vehicle factory. He has the ground war pretty much taken, but he does not have the air war. Sactoth has quite a few, or had quite a few Avengers in play. Napalm Bomber, however, taking out a lot of these bandits, or heavily damaging them at least. Not going to kill all of them, but will will thin out the ranks a little bit. The Vamp to the north will stop the leeches coming in that really should have come in already. I'm a bit surprised they haven't. Trying to get rid of these Avengers as well with the Vamp. That should work out fairly well. Or not, actually. One Vamp, still not quite enough, despite... Well, despite being a fairly powerful anterior unit, it's not quite enough, and down it goes. With Sackdoth coming in towards the southeast, he does have the Ravagers coming in. He has more Ravagers coming up. He has some Crashers as well, which are not a bad idea, but at this point, the Bandits... Actually, the Bandits coming in are not able to get through the defenses fairly well. This is what I was a bit worried about with the Bandits, is they have their limits. They can only go so far, even with large numbers of them. There's only so much they can do. They just get hit so... They get killed so quickly that... Okay, a Roach... That wasn't a Roach, that was a Leecho. There we go. The Leecho finally being used for what I expected to be used, except not quite hitting. Getting rid of some of the wind generators. So Sakdos' energy economy is still being taken down, but that's not what he needs to go for. If he gets rid of the airplane plant, that'll be game. It looks like Fusion Rector has been built up for El Torero, which... His power economy is pretty much set. And he's also taking care of that north once again, so getting his metal economy back up as well. Definitely set over 100 energy per second. Really, we don't care at this point what it is. It's just over 100. Although it would be kind of nice if I could see what was going on there. But the point is, El Torero is economically very healthy. And another vamp is trying to take care of these Avengers. Able to actually deal with both of them. No, one of them able to get away, one of them is going down into the water. But enough Avengers being built that it doesn't matter. El Toro just has a massive production advantage. Caretakers are able to just are able to build way too many Avengers for it to matter. And another vamp goes down. And even against these anti-air defenses, it's just not enough. Saktoth, really what he need to do right now is. Sheesh. He is actually taking back some of the ground war. He more levelers would probably do the trick. Given the amount of bandits being built, just half a dozen levelers should take care of them. As for the air, that's hard to one to win. The crashes are a good idea. Definitely good to have the fast anti-air right there. However, it looks like he is going for more levelers. He is doing exactly the leveler idea. Only got a couple of them, but even those are getting rid of the bandits quite nicely. At least for cost, but the question is production time. Crasher is coming up, and enough of those will... Let's see, how many Crashers are in play? There are two in play, one of them over by this Stardust, in case the Leecho has to come back to it. Avengers are not going here, and the Leecho is able to get rid of the... There we go, able to get rid of that vehicle factory. That is huge. At this point, Sackdoth does not have a whole lot of options. He does have a lot of metal. He needs a lot of build power to make use of that metal, and he could rebuild the light vehicle factory. I don't know if he'll have the time, though. The shield bots are coming in. These laser turrets are the main defense he has, but even then, the Avengers are actually doing a number on everything that he has in the air. 
El Torero will be able to start taking out everything on the ground as well. And the Shield Bot's coming into their death, not able to deal any damage to the laser turrets. El Torero is either going to need to go for an aerial approach against the laser turrets or just go instead for thugs? Nope, he's going for bandits. He's continuing on with the bandits and it doesn't seem to matter. Sackdoth has thrown in the towel and that is the game. I guess he just blew up his units without surrendering. That's actually a little bit surprising. Why is the game not over? There we go. So, Sakta throws in the towel, and that was a... That was a pretty exciting game. A little bit bizarre. I've not seen the Leecho used to that extent. I kind of wish it was used a bit more in that game. It was a little bit disappointing, just the fact that it was only used about half a dozen times when it could have been used continuously for about ten minutes. Still worked out, though. But yeah, that was a lot of bandits. That was a lot of bandits. Quite surprising there. Oh, and Sackdoth, yeah, pointing out that he was kind of silly for having spammed all those Ravagers. Eh, early game Ravager, not sure I would have agreed, not sure I agreed with that. The, le the levelers would have worked out better, especially once he realizes all these bandits coming up. I could see not going for Scorchers, but I can't really see not going for levelers. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and that is going to be it for me tonight. So have a good night, everybody.